Hey retro fans, welcome to another episode of Retro Gaming Memories. In this episode we're going to be talking about something that's kind of forgotten to the mists of time um, and that is catalogues, gaming catalogues and product catalogues. Um, I have an abundance of these things, um, all different shapes, sizes and formats. Um, I used to love getting these things, if you ever bought a game <clears throat> you would always get a little pamphlet in it. Um, sometimes it was the little things like this, uh, sort of fold out pamphlet things. Um, other times, especially the Sega things, it was a poster that you folded out um, that had the product catalogue on it. Um, you would get, just having a look through some of these things here, we've got like the Parker Brothers, Telly Games, Spectra Video, um, and Activision. There's all these sorts of things that you used to get in, in games. Um, showing you what was what was coming up and it's nice to have a look at them um in the current day and go back um to see and think right oh yeah i remember that getting released or seeing games that never got released um but were advertised it's quite quite fun to see that kind of stuff um so i have i have a few of these just for nostalgia purposes um but i've got two that we're going to concentrate on in this video and those are the silica catalogs now a lot of people will remember, especially if you're a kind of ST or Amiga user, <clears throat> um, Silica were always prominent in the the magazines back in the day. I suppose PC as well, um, Silica systems and things like that. To, to uh, they they always advertised all the kind of Amiga deals and all that kind of stuff. So it's really nice to have these catalogs. These were donated to me by by one of my good friends, um, who had a lot of Amiga. Uh, magazines and, and things like that and when he, he moved house he donated them all to me so they're all in safe storage and they all get used and, and kept and cherished as you can see um, so yeah I thought it'd be quite nice to have a have a flick through these and just see laugh really at the prices I think um, so there's a, I think there's a just a general sort of computer and video games one, um, which will be sort of PC stuff and consoles, and there's a an Amiga specific one which is quite chunky. Um, so we'll have a flick through those, and uh, and yeah, laugh at the prices of things, um, and and see what we can find. So I haven't looked at these for years, so you know this will be quite fresh for me as well. So I'm going to do a different kind of camera angle, so hopefully that we can get a bit of a better look at. Uh, you know the the catalogs rather than me kind of holding them up to the thing where you're going to get glare and all that I'll try a different camera angle and see hopefully it'll, it'll work a little better so okay so we'll get that set up and I'll see you in a minute okay so I thought we would start with the computer and video games and telecommunications um, catalog um, now I've, I've set up a mic because I'm the way I've got the camera set up um, I think just using normal audio would be a bit poor. So I've set up a mic, so if, if my voice sounds slightly different, that's that's why. Um, but anyway, let's let's get stuck in and we'll see, see how we go. So, yeah, the computer and video games product catalogue from December 1993, my word. <clears throat> First up, the Atari Lynx. I never had a Lynx back in the day, but... Um, I owned one laterally, um, and it was it was pretty good. I quite enjoyed it. Um, it's it's got some no bad games. Some of the arcade conversions are really good. Um, I really liked Steel Talons was quite surprising. Um, it did really it played really well. Um, Robotron not so much. Um, I was quite surprised by I can't see it here Rampart. Rampart was a really good conversion on the, the Lynx, but uh, I mean, you look at some of these prices, 20, 25, 28 quid, which isn't too bad, I suppose, but software from 12.99. Sega Game Gear, what's the average price on there? 20, 29 quid for cartridges, 22 pounds. Um, can't really read that, I suppose, but Lemmings, Leaderboard, Jurassic Park, Thirty pounds for Jurassic Park. I suppose it would have been the hit thing at the time in '93. But um, something about that would have been that would have been probably the one that I would have went for if I had it. Game Gear, the, 
Shinobi and Streets of Rage. Although at this point in time I had the, the Mega Drive, so um, yeah. Master System 2 movies pack, um, pretty good. I like that it tells you the specs of these things. Look, it's got, I just noticed that it's got all the specs 16 kilobytes of RAM in the Game Gear, 128k RAM. It's quite fun to see these and the prices of them. I mean, look at that 50 quid for the, the Master System and Sonic. That's a pretty good deal, isn't it? You'd pay that for one now, more than that. Ah, the Mega Drive. Mega Drive 2 and Mega Drive 1, so. 93 the Mega Drive 1 was kind of old hat. I wonder if there's a price between this the Mega Drive 1. Do they actually have the Mega Drive 1 console? Oh, aye, they do. Mega Drive 1 and Street Fighter 149 quid. Mega Drive 2, all these are Mega Drive 2 bundles. <coughs> the Wild and Wet pack. <laughs> Sounds slightly dodgy. Good, the bad, and ugly. That's that's quite a good, good pack. James Bond, Sonic Two, and Terminator. The price of some of these uh, peripherals, not too bad actually. I noticed they don't. Do they have a ah, the Sega six button pad, fifteen quid. I mean, when you consider now that if you buy like a PlayStation Four pad, it's fifty five quid or something stupid like that. So to get an official Sega six button pad for uh, for fifteen pounds was not too bad. Uh, you can phone for the latest releases. <laughs> Not like today where you check the the web. Accessories, books. These are too small to read, really. I've got my glasses on and I still kind of read them. But uh, it's quite nice just to have a flick through. I won't spend too much time going through this. Otherwise, this video will be about five hours long. The ST. I love the, the look of the ST. My friend had an ST back in the day. I ended up with the Amiga. But I was always an Atari kind of guy to start with and I really like to look at the ST but I think I made the right choice ultimately getting the Amiga um, and certainly the amount of friendships I've made because of the Amiga uh, definitely made it the right choice but the 520 ST 150 bucks I mean that's not too bad is it I mean 300 pound look at that 300 pound for a 1040 with 4 mega RAM now I've, we'll, need, we'll look at the Amiga catalogue in a little minute but I'm pretty sure that at this point in time the A1200 was dearer than that with 2 mega RAM. That's a pretty good deal. That probably would have tempted me if I had the money at the time, especially if it would be in a music pack. you got the free, uh, the Ubiquitous 10 games uh, free. They always did this, they did it with the Amiga and they did, obviously did it with the ST as well. Asterisk, Asterisk, Asterix. Driving Force, Live and Let Die, Onslaught, Pike Mania, Rick Dangerous, Rock and Roll, Squeak, Travel Pursuit. That's that's a no bad starter pack. Some good games in there. 12 inch grayscale monitor, that's the one that my pal had. High res mono monitor, 129 quid. The Atari Falcon, whoa. This was the equivalent of the A4000 I suppose. What's the specs on this? 68030, 32-bit, uh, 512k ROM, 1.4, oh no, 1, 4 and 14 megabyte configurations. Digital signal processor, I mean it was a pretty, pretty good spec on that, but look, 4 mega RAM, 200 meg hard drive, 1000 pounds. <laughs> you have to buy cable adapters. The Scion Series 3, I remember my pal had a 3, no it was a 5 Scion 5MX, these were these were the thing to have in the day, that was the iPhone of the day wasn't it, just to, ah and then we've got the Amstrad notepad, as much as I love the Amstrad these things just look hideous, and I remember playing with one of these in Tandy, and just thinking what an utterly useless piece of kit this is. The PCWs always had them running in, in Tandy as well. PC family packs. Amstrad's family package. Yeah, they had these kind of weird analogue joysticks and things. And it, I'm sure it ran its weird own Amstrad front end thing. Elite Plus, Jimmy White, Snooker, Strike Eagle, Prince of Persia. Lynx. Every, every machine, I seem to remember every machine back in the day 
having links because it was photorealistic and it looked amazing. Um, 599 is not too bad, I suppose. Ah, the Amstrad 486. God, we're getting into the, the powerful guns now, look. 899. 4 mega RAM. I mean, that's a lesser spec than the, the Falcon. The Atari Falcon that we just looked at. Um, it's a £100 cheaper. Does that come in water? Don't know. No, I think it comes with a monitor. Yeah, it does. Jeez, not bad. The Ambra Sprinter 2, never heard it. The 486, look at the price of these things. The DX2. Games and films on your PC, 16 bit CD quality sound with the MPEG playback card. My god, look at the size of that. Huge. New games already in development. TV and film quality, high resolutions. 399 quid with two CDs for free. Full screen versus quarter screen. Oh. The expert PC software range. Yeah. It's a misnomer if ever I saw one. So this is all the peripherals, PC peripherals. Uh, sound cards. CD-ROM drives. 115 quid for a CD drive. Single speed, oh no, dual speed, 159 quid for a, a dual speed. Seventh guest, £34, sound cards. Printers, I always remember these printer starter kits with labels and perforated paper and all that kind of stuff. Um, because they were dot matrix printers, clearly. 128 characters per second. I remember looking at these and thinking, oh, it would be lovely. I had a Star LC10 printer for my... Uh, my Amiga 1200. Don't know if I've got them in here, but I think it was probably out of date in 93. 24-pin. Remember these kind of being, whoa, 24-pin. That's very fancy as opposed to like the 9-pin low-resolution printers. Laser printers. Thermal colour. Bubble jet printers. God, look, you can get a Commodore 9-pin. Top Matrix. Laser printer, 599 for a laser printer wasn't it too bad in 1993. Ah, the Ricofax machines. <laughs> Special offers ST and XE. 8 bit XE ROMs, look, there's a car look. £2.50 for Kaboom. River Raid 395. Did anybody still have an Atari 8 bit in 1993? Jeez, oh. The toss upgrade. Techno box drafter, hard drives. Look at that. 44 megabytes. Jeez, oh. That can't be right. What is this? 25 milliseconds. Is that just that? That is a 44 megabyte removable. Oh, it's a removable hard drive. 44 megabytes, 1,549 quid, just because it was a portable drive. The Atari portfolio. PC drives and silica hold alls and all that kind of good stuff. So yeah, okay, that was just a quick flick through the uh, the PC and video games peripherals one. Um, yeah, so... Let's get the Amiga catalogue and we'll have a little look through that. We'll spend a little bit more time. Uh, further peripherals and accessories in its own catalogue look. Oh, very exciting. Okay, so on to the Amiga guide then. Um, I, suppose, I was going to call it a supplement there, but I suppose this, compared to the, the PC catalogue, this is the kind of main event really. Uh, it's a lot thicker for a start. So obviously the Amiga at the time was the, the big thing. So... Um, the ever-present um, chaos pack from Silica. This was advertised with every every machine. That was you. You always saw that they they pushed this big styly. Um, <clears throat> the boxes that I've actually got for Syndicate and Pinball Fantasies are 
the Silica Chaos ones, which is quite nice because I never owned these back in the day. My friend um, Richard back in the day bought a, an Amiga 600 from Silica and he had the, the pack. It wasn't the Chaos pack. Um, I can't remember what games he actually got. Syndicate was one of them. Um, and I remember him buying a RAM expansion. So he had two megabytes of RAM in the A A600, which meant you could see the opening movie for uh, for Syndicate, which I'd never seen before, which was astounding. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so the the new CD32, um, the world's first 32-bit CD-ROM console. Yeah, we all know how that went, eh? The Mega 600 Lemmings Pack, £189. Let's see, we'll come across these things, so... Uh, silica, we are specialists, yep. Why buy an Amiga? Because it's awesome. Photon paint. I like this. Total gifts worth over £265. Crap that you didn't really want. Although, I never, I've never used photon paint, but it looks pretty good. Deluxe paint was obviously the thing to have. Um, but if you played this right, if you got the right kind of pack, if you got the Commodore pack plus the Silica stuff, you got a, a really good starter pack, but terrific titles, and to be fair this was a really good pack, I mean Nick Faldo's Golf is good fun um, even if you're not really into golf it's it's a nice looking game, especially on A1200 uh, it had garage shading and all sorts of stuff um, so it looked really nice Chaos Engine's a classic, Pinball Fantasies obviously, absolute classic um, although the spell dollars wrong, dearie me Terrible. And Syndicate obviously is an absolute beast of a game. Love it. Technical specs of all the Amigas, we don't need to go through that. Uh, the Lemmings pack, see this is what I mean, if you bought the Lemmings pack, you got Lemmings, uh, D-Paint 3, plus the, the extra pack. So you could build up a pretty good pack for, you know, £219 is no bad. I still like the A600. That's the pack I had, the Wild, wild Weird and Wicked pack. Um, £229 it was £189 I paid for mine I didn't get it from Silica, I bought mine from Clydesdale and Kerstor from Edinburgh um, and they gave you Street Fighter 2 for free, which never worked right because there was graphics glitches in it I think it was it wasn't a, uh, compatible with the A600, but this was a great pack um, what have you got again Putty, Pushover Grand Prix, uh, D-Paint 3 and it would have been great if you got these as well. But uh, a nice, nice little starter pack. I love Deluxe Paint 3. It was brilliant. Um, this would have been a great pack to get as well. The Amiga Epic Myth is a brilliant game. I've never played Rome. Epic has got a, a really good 3D intro sequence to it. Um, but I haven't actually played it much. Um, I've just kind of loaded it up, check it worked. It was just a game that I always fancied back in the day. So it's, it's on my to play list. But the A600, I mean, I loved my A600. Uh, I ultimately sold it um, to get my Amiga 1200, but um, that's the pack I had. Um, and I've since re repurchased the kind of these smaller box versions. Um, I'm going to do an Amiga collection video at some point in the future, so you'll see these. But I've repurchased the smaller pack that I would have had back in the day. Um, hard drive pack. I'm sure it was like a 30 meg hard drive or something. Oh no, 64 meg. That's not bad, 64 meg hard drive. 379 with 2 meg of RAM. It's not bad. But here we go, the A1200. This is what everybody wanted, wasn't it? 299 with no hard drive. So 60. Let's just compare. Let's, let's really knack it up the pictures here and just jump back. So 2 meg of RAM. With an 85 meg hard drive, what can we get here? So it was an extra 50 quid to get an A1200. Yeah, that's a no-brainer, isn't it? Unless you were on a real budget, you would get an A1200 over a 600. Even if you did want all the the extra toys that came with this. This was a great software pack, obviously, but that's what you would have wanted. Um, although the Racing Chase pack wasn't very strong. Desktop Dynamite. So th this is the kind of the Desktop Dynamite. What was the pack I had? Can't remember. But I remember them kind of pushing this with words worth and whatnot. Um, 
I mean, this was a nice pack. This this was this was kind of trying to rival, I suppose, PCs, because you had Deluxe Paint Four, which was astounding. Wordworth AGE, which was a really good word processor, Digital Print Manager. So you know, this this was kind of trying to push the the sort of business side of it as well as the games. Um, Dennis, I've never played. Oscar looks beautiful. It's it's all right. I played it on the CD32 because obviously it came with the CD32, but uh, it was all right. Deluxe Paint 4 AGA, brilliant software package. Still my favourite. Um, although I had Deluxe Paint 5, but D Paint 4 is still still an amazing package when you consider what you could do with it back in the day. Um, Amiga 1500 Home Accounts package. 400 bucks, that's not bad. Two built in drives. Yeah. 1500. The new A4000, I used to lust over this, I remember actually phoning up Silica, they had a, 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 a sort of section in Debenhams in Glasgow, that was the closest one, I, I lived in Edinburgh at the time, and I remember actually phoning up to ask if they had an Amiga 4000 in stock so I could come and look at it. I had no intention of buying it, I couldn't afford it, you know, you could probably buy a car for that price back in the day, um, but I just wanted to actually see one. Um, because just the, the specs of this thing at the time, you know, blew me away. Um, but I mean, look at the price it. 2,399 quid. 6 mega RAM, 525 mega hard drive. An 040 processor, 25 megahertz. It's an impressive spec, but, you know. Look, you could take your 6 meg to 18 for an extra 450 quid. Jesus Christ. Ah, the CD32, look. Edge connectors, showing you all the bits and bobs. Play games, watch films. Soon films will av be available on CD. And a standard called Video CD. Features a dual speed drive, which with a special adapter, is available late 93, can play these films. Yeah, the MPEG adapter. It was a nice feature to have. I mean, I remember, I remember looking at the, the CD32 when, when I, I got my CD32 for Christmas. Um, it didn't work and we had to take it back on Boxing Day to, to Clydesdale to, to get it swapped out and I remember when the guy was away kind of getting my new one looking at the Philips CDI which was running a golf game which was like photorealistic because it was doing that kind of Mortal Kombat style digitised graphics um, and I remember looking at it and thinking God that looks amazing and I remember my dad saying to me my dad had taken me in to get it swapped out and my dad saying to me do you want one of them instead because it was the same price I was like, ah, no, 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 I want the CD32 because I knew this was more of a game system. Um, and the CDI, I didn't like the controller and stuff on it. Um, it looked really nice, but the fact that you could plug in the, the FMV cartridge to this, ultimately, to, to give it essentially CDI, the big selling point of the CDI was the kind of video film thing. Um, and that you could do it with this. I never ever got the, the FMV pack because I'm sure the FMV thing was about 300 quid. Um, but yeah, Diggers Oscar and Free from Le uh, free Lemmings from Silica. Free CD TV game <laughs> with every 32 bit powerhouse. Yeah, um, that, that was the pack I had with Diggers and Oscar. Um, yeah, that was a kind of intro pack. CD 32 titles. Pretty much all of which were available on the Amiga for a lot cheaper. Um, Degeneration. New, 23 quid. Um, Composer Quest. Defender of the Crown 2, which was a CD TV title, 4D Sports CD TV. So there was lots and lots of CD TV titles. Um, I love that they're, they're saying that it's coming out, you know, in, in December 93. Um, Elite 2, Lost Turbo Trilogy, Man United, Microcosm. Microcosm did look really nice. and it, I remember um, kind of shoving it in my pal's face. He had a PC at the time and he was like, the PC just, you know, pisses all over the Amiga and all that kind of stuff and I, I got quite defensive. And I remember showing the CD32 versus the Microcosm running. He had it on his PC He's like, ah, well, it looks quite nice. And I'm like, yeah, this is a 300 quid console. Your PC was a grand and a half, you know. Um, but, I mean, ultimately, that was all just silly nonsense back in the day. FMV board, £199. Yeah. 
I thought it was dearer than that, but it, still. The CDTV add-on for your A500, £100, not too bad. If you had the A500 at the time. CDTV accessories and software. I wonder if they're the same price, actually. I wonder if they've got uh, Defender of the Crown, twenty nine ninety nine. Oh no, fourteen ninety nine. So you could actually buy the CDTV games cheaper than the CD thirty two games, <laughs> which is a bit strange. Accelerators. Ah, the GVP Turbo for the A five hundred. Is this fun? Is it fun looking through this catalogue, or have you fallen asleep yet? Um, emulator boards, 286 bridge boards, 386. I mean, to be able to turn your, you know, your your big box Amiga into a PC for 250 quid for 386 was no bad. Hard disk drives. Civilization, free external hard drive, 799 quid. Good God. But you know. I remember them being this expensive. I remember it being about a pound a megabyte back in the day when I bought things. All these joysticks. Look at how many joysticks you could get. Brilliant. Quick shot Python. That was my joystick of choice. And if you'll excuse me. There we go. I've still got a quick shot Python. Still use that all the time. Great joystick. 899. The two the quick shot two turbo was great as well. I really liked that. That was a beast of a uh, Stick. Um, is that an analog joystick? Yeah. We're playing flight sims, although slightly underwhelming. Modems, mice, trackball. We'll skip through these a little bit quicker because eh? uh, we've still got a fair amount to go. Monitors, Philips monitor, Commodore 1942, 349 quid. For high res 0.28 millimeter dot pitch. The Miracle keyboard system. Mega Mix sampler, MIDI interface. Music X, I got that free on the cover of uh, Amiga format. It was quite good actually. RAM boards. How much was the Amiga Hawk? 8 mega RAM. Is that an accelerate as well? No, oh, FPU. 40 megahertz, 8 mega RAM, 500 bucks. <whistles> scanners, God, do you remember these handheld scanners? They were awful. You would be scanning, pulling down something, and then kind of just it would slide or move or whatever, and you'd just end up with this horrible line across. It was terrible. I bought one of them for like 29 quid um, back in the day at some computer fair out in Ingolston. <coughs> Kickback ROM switcher. Uh, the video kind of rombo stuff. Oops, I'll just sorry about that. Gen lock. <coughs> the games, books, Amiga DOS inside now. <coughs> yeah. Alien breed, Aquaventura, Bonanza Brothers, James Pond, Gods, twenty three quid. So this is all the, the games bit, which is quite quite hefty, still going through. Zool, Dizzy, some of these I've heard of, some of them I've not. Ah, the Astra Pack. Not bad for 25 quid, but then the games were pretty poor. Data Storm, Dungeon Quest, not bad. Uh, RVF Honda, Shuffle, Shuffle Pack, it was Shuffle Puck Cafe. I remember playing that on the uh, the Apple the Apple Mac, Shuffle Puck. Driving Sims, Lotus, Formula One Grand Prix. Nigel Mansell for the A1200. Had that on the CD32. It was pretty good on the CD32. Birds of Prey, Life Sims, Castles, 27 quid. Syndicate, 31 pounds. I don't know why they're selling that, because if you've bought any Amiga out of here, you're going to get that for nothing. Knights of the Sky, great game. Sports Sims. Oh, do you remember this? Uh, the Morph Cinemorph. God. Silent servers. Image FX. Image processor for Cinemorph. 200 quid. Art Department Pro. 
art and graphics scala i mean these were getting the big prices real 3d imagine all that kind of stuff the kind of proper power software education dtp i mean look at the cad cad programs compared to what you get now for free i suppose everything moves on didn't it but Education, music, bars and pipes, £229. I remember getting a demo of that. Or did you get it free, ultimately? I think you got it free um, where one of the, the Amiga magazines later on. Um, it was it was too complicated for me at the time. Um, but it was a, a good, it turns out it was a good sequencer. Programming, Music X. Got a little phone there. Utility spreadsheets, Ami back tools, Dopus, Dopus 4. I oh, keep hitting the thing, sorry. So there we go. Internal upgrades, you can have them fit things for £30 if you can't do it yourself. There you go, though, the Amiga catalogue um, from Silica. I hope you enjoyed that. I don't know if that was ultimately extremely boring. Um, yeah, I just thought I'd do something a little bit different. So hopefully you enjoyed that little uh, trip down memory lane, looking at these old things again. And uh, yeah, let me know if you'd like to see more of this kind of stuff because like I say, I've got many, many catalogues for Atari and, and all that kind of stuff. So we could we could do another one of these at some point. If it was if it was fun, if you all fell asleep and were bored senseless, then please let me know. Just put in the comments. Don't ever do that again. It was rubbish. Um, but yeah. So, anyway, that's it. I'm uh, I'm going to sign off, and uh, until next time, uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.